Secret Service Special Agent Lou Miletti was in New York City when the assassin struck. Lou Miletti was an ex-Green Beret, having served in Detachment A-502 of the 5th Special Forces Group, where he advised and assisted the Vietnamese Special Forces in the Joint CIA Pentagon Program, the Civilian Irregular Defense Group, a camp life at its finest. He had found himself in the Secret Service after turning down an NSA job. He'd recently been assigned to the New York Field Office and recalls the team being stunned at how quickly Hinckley had managed to get off six shots. That a lone wolf like him could inflict this level of deadliness made it quite clear what could happen in the event of a truly planned, professionally orchestrated attack by a Black September type terrorist organisation. The Secret Service needed to rethink their protection philosophy. In the aftermath of the attempted assassination on President Reagan, the Secret Service began to refocus and rebuild, shifting its mindset from defense to offense. The evolution within the Secret Service would be born from asymmetric threats from now on, lessons which Maletti had learned in Vietnam. Paramilitary units called the counter-assault team would now shadow the President 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Their job was no longer to cover the principal and evacuate. Their job was shooting. Counter-assault team members were unconventional warfare experts, capable of repelling a coordinated attack with withering firepower. The new philosophy was not simply to defend against an assassin, but to have a guerrilla warfare corps, secret service agents that were ever-present, anticipating an attack as if the president were forever in a hostile environment. By the time Reagan was shot, Lou Maletti had already been pre-vetted to join the counter-assault team thanks to his special forces background. Two years later, and now transferred to Washington DC, Lou Maletti excelled. Because of what he experienced in Vietnam, Maletti could bring those concepts to presidential protection. The assassination of the President of the United States is quite literally a cataclysmic event in world history. It is also the worst possible incident that can occur on the Secret Service's watch. For this reason, it is the practice of the Secret Service to review and assess all assassination attempts wherever and whenever they occur. Every day the counter-assault teams would strategize about how someone might try to assassinate the new president of the United States, George H.W. Bush, something ingrained in the team by their highly motivated boss, John McGaw. One day, McGaw approached Maletti with an idea for a radical attack on principal training exercise. He asked Maletti if he had any contacts within Delta Force owing to his time in Special Forces. Maletti did, and so he was sent down to Fort Bragg to meet secretly with Delta Force commanders. Maletti presented Delta Force with a challenge, direct from the Secret Service. They were to come up with the most devastating small footprint ambush they could conceive of, to plan and train for an attack on principle targeting the White House. There were specific ground rules in place. The Delta operators were not allowed to use their clearances to get classified information to devise the ambush, they had to use reconnaissance only and use only publicly available information. Their goal was to figure out the weak point in the Secret Service's defense system and try and breach it. Maletti told them if they were caught in the White House tour line, it's a point for the Secret Service. The Delta commander accepted the challenge and began devising an attack on principal operation. The game was on. The chosen Delta Force unit trained for six to eight weeks. Even John McGaw and Lou Maletti remained in the dark regarding the attack on principal that Delta Force would attempt. On the night of October 14, 1990, President George H.W. Bush was taken to Camp David, the presidential retreat in Catoctin Mountain Park in Maryland. Six Delta Force operators loaded up into a small passenger aircraft at an unknown airport in Virginia. After an agonizing wait, the plane was at its maximum altitude and the operators, with their O2 respirators on, jumped from the aircraft, conducting a high altitude, low opening jump at night without night vision or GPS. They had chosen this method specifically to counter the radar system installed at National Airport, just five miles from the White House. In less than two minutes, the operators were in sight of their target and opened their chutes, just a hundred feet above the lawn. All of a sudden, the operators were stood proudly on the White House lawn. They had won the game. None of the agents on duty that night had seen or heard the operators until it was too late. If this had been a real attack, there would now be a real, present threat on the President's life. The radar system installed at National Airport, designed to pick up any aircraft flying in the radius around the White House, had missed them. The direct phone connected from National to the Secret Service comms office at the White House, which usually rang several times a week, had not rung. Delta Force had successfully outfoxed it and penetrated the outer defences. 
The exact methods of how they did so are extremely classified even to this day. After admitting defeat, a microwave Doppler system was installed on the roof. Doppler microwave detection devices transmit a continuous signal of low energy microwave radiation at a target area and then analyze the reflected signal. Delta Force then repeated the raid. This time, the Doppler radar picked up the parachute assassins. The Delta Force commander gave Lou Meletti an infrared photograph of one of the Delta Force operators in a harness as he was landing on the White House lawn. Meletti take the photo to a wall in his office at the White House with the words, no comment, written underneath. Delta Force 1, Secret Service, 0. The Delta Force raid has never been officially revealed and is a real testament to just how good Delta was, even in 1990, at high value target kill or capture style missions, something which would stand them in good stead in a little over a decade later.